Hi everyone, I'm Josh and welcome to Josh Wright Piano TV. Thank you so much for joining me today. I wanted to address a question that I've received in many different forms and with many variations many times over the years. This is one of the most common themes in my emails along with how do I overcome stage fright and how do I reduce tension in my playing? Those are two of the biggest concepts that I receive questions on and we've covered those two concepts so many times on this channel in many different videos. The other question is, is it too late to become a concert pianist? I'm so passionate about this, but I'm 25 and I just started playing. Or I'm 13 years old, but I practice for 30 minutes a day. And sometimes I'll even receive questions like, I'm you know, 15 years old, I'm going to study at a conservatory, I'm playing in a lot of competitions. The last scenario, is the most likely scenario <laughs> where they have got a really good quality teacher, they're playing at a high level, and they're planning on studying at a higher education level, um, music institution, conservatory, university, um, or private studies with really high quality teachers. Even that scenario is very difficult to predict whether they will be a successful concert pianist financially. I wanna bring this idea into to light, I guess, that you don't have to make money performing in order to be a successful musician. Um, you don't have to make a lot of money performing to be a successful musician. For the most part, the advice I usually give people is keep piano as your passion, as your hobby, as your main driver in life, the thing that keeps you excited, and make money doing something else because as soon as you try to start making a living, sorry, as soon as you start trying to make a living being a musician, there is an extra layer of stress that comes with that. Now, if you're hearing this advice and you're saying, I don't care at all what Josh says. I'm going to make this work. Well, that's great. That was very much how I was. I, I said, I'm going to study finances when I'm very young. I studied financial books since I was a teenager because I knew being a musician can be feast or famine. And I wanted to make sure that I would always be able to provide for my family as a musician. And I made sure I was very careful with the steps that I chose in my career to make things work financially so I didn't have to go get a, a different job. If you're hearing this and you're like, I'm going to make music work, I don't care what anybody says, well, that's probably the determination you need. If you're kind of on the fence, wishy-washy about it, I would absolutely say keep studying music, keep it as your main passion, main driver in life, but uh, of something that you enjoy, but don't try to make a living at it because it is very difficult the market is often oversaturated and it can be very discouraging. Having said that, we need great music teachers around the world. Do not let this video discourage you from teaching music or we need a lot of accompanists. We do need people to play concerts, but that world is one of the most diehard, competitive, dog-eat-dog -dog worlds that I've ever seen. There's only one Daniel Trifonov. There's only one Marta Argerich. There's one Mitsuko Uchida. There's one Murray Praia. Now, there's many other pianists out there, but how many could you name off the top of your head? Could you name 10? Could you name 50? Could you name 100? I don't know if you could name 1,000, but there's probably 1,000 piano teachers where I live in the Salt Lake City uh, area. There's, a, I mean, we have a very strong piano culture here. There's probably a thousand teachers in the valley, I would guess. Could you name a thousand concert pianists? It's <laughs> something that is a reality that we need a lot of good music teachers. We need people to continue to play great music. And as a teacher, as an accompanist, as an amateur performer, maybe you play um, at a restaurant or in a bar or at a shopping mall. I don't care where you play or you play at retirement homes or you set up your own entrepreneurial endeavor. I know there's, I, I should have looked this up before. It just came to my mind right now. There is a couple, I believe it is, or a couple performers. You can leave it down in the comments. I'm sure it'll come to me right after I 
press that record button, um, that travel around with a truck and the truck becomes the concert venue and they say, we're going to be here. It's amazing. They were so creative with that. I never thought that I would be making a living doing YouTube videos and online courses. And I still teach um, a lot of private lessons. I still supplement all of that with some performing and I am paid for most of my performances. So I still make somewhat of a living performing, but I've had to supplement it because it is really rigorous. I have friends who perform all the time and they have told me, every one of them, that unless you are at the top level like Daniel Trifonov and Argerich and Sergei Babayan and those guys that are on the road constantly, which is, I've heard from Daniel and Sergei uh, personally that it's a very tough life and they're like, it's extremely tiring, that unless you're one of them, it's really hard to command really high prices if you're going the traditional route of I'm going to win competitions, I'm going to then have a performing career and that's that. I remember Ma Emmanuel Axe um, gave a beautiful concert at the University of Utah. And I love him as a person. He's such a kind man. And he did a little question and answer uh, earlier that day. And somebody said, how did you make such a successful career? And he said, I won a competition and the agents made the career for me. And I just practiced and performed. Unfortunately, that no longer truly exists. He said, you guys have a unique set of challenges. And back then, there wasn't thousands upon thousands of piano competitions going around. Even winners of mid-tier to larger tier competitions. Now, if you win the Chopin competition or Tchaikovsky, you probably have a pretty nice career set up for you. But unless you're winning those top tier competitions, you might get you know, a couple of years of concert engagements and you better do a really nice job networking because if those uh, contacts don't follow up and keep, keep inviting you back, you might find yourself out of work. So I don't make this video at all to discourage people because I've made a career as a musician, but I've done it in unique and creative ways. And I've done it in some traditional ways as well. I still teach privately. That's a very traditional way to make a living as a musician. I've branched out onto YouTube with these videos. I've done online courses um, that you know go deeper than this channel goes over. Uh, I do a lot of online presentations. Like I just last week, I presented for Pianist Magazine. I've presented at many different festivals um, around the world. But it's this big combination of many things. It's not just I won a competition. Now I want to be a performer, and that's all I want to do. Think creatively. Think of how you can contribute as a performer and to your community at. Um, in a unique way uh, to your community, not just playing a concert and then they pay you thousands and thousands of dollars and then you practice your next program and then they pay you another uh, big sum of money and I just have to do a few of those a year and I'm set. It That is a very hard reality to come by. I guess you can do it, but I haven't figured out how and I don't know if I would want to know how. I I really enjoy all aspects of my career. I love making these free YouTube videos. I love making the paid videos for my courses that, you know, are, are a lot more work to prepare for and research and um, polish up the pieces before I play them uh, for those tutorials. Some of the tutorials I say, I haven't polished it and I'm going to show you how I work on this. Um, I don't do that so much anymore, but when I first got started, I did that a bit more. Um, just trying to find my footing, exactly what I was going to do with those tutorials. And it's been a journey that keeps weaving in and out of unexpected opportunities and events um, that I wouldn't have ever dreamed of when I was younger. But it's been a wonderful and a fulfilling career. And I look forward to continuing to be a musician in some form or another for the rest of my life. But don't set yourself, the whole purpose of this video is don't think that there's only one path as a musician. There are so many paths and there's such a great need for good musicians don't think that you just have to perform and that's it in order to be successful because every great performer i know with the exception of just a few people they also give master classes they also occasionally teach sometimes even full time and they contribute in unique ways uh, many are recording artists many teach at various festivals um, many 
do community outreach in their own unique ways. So I hope this video is inspirational and encouraging rather than discouraging and, oh, Josh told me not to try to be a musician, I'll never make it because I'm not saying that. Those of you who are determined to make it, you're going to make it, uh, you know, because nothing's going to stop you. But for all of you who are questioning that, think about unique ways that you can contribute as a musician to society. And if you can make a living from it, great. And if not, all is not lost. You can still have a very fulfilling career as a musician as you supplement your income with another side job. So I hope that helps. I hope <laughs> I haven't made anybody quit uh, music by making this video. I hope instead that this gives you some ideas to encourage you to keep pressing on as a musician. I'll leave a few links in the description below. One of them is for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips that I use every day to, uh, in my practicing and in my teaching to take your playing to a higher level. I'll leave a link for those paid courses that I mentioned if you'd like to go deeper than this channel goes over. And finally, I'll leave a gear kit link, all the gear that I use in this studio, if you would like to also make videos or recordings of yourself playing. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.